Hey YouTube, this is Farwizard23. I am going to take a few moments here to discuss my thoughts on Star Wars The Last Jedi. I had a chance to go see this the other night with my friend Tim. And this is a spoiler review. I'm going to be talking about aspects of this film. Go with it, okay? My, okay, first off, my gut reaction after watching this film... I feel the ending drag on this film. There are so many moments in this film where you think we're coming to the final reels, and it just keeps fucking going. I'm like, I'm sorry, that was really just my gut reaction towards the end of this. And I was having fun the entire time. It's just like, my God, and every single ending kept topping the stuff. It kept topping it, like, more danger, more drama, more more awesome stuff. Like, So it wasn't, like, a bad thing, but it's like, oh my freaking God, will this movie just fucking end? I just talked to my friend David, who was apparently at the at it too, and he agreed. He's like, "Oh my God, you're totally right." Um, <laughs> um, so that's my gut reaction. I am hyped for what Episode Nine will be to conclude this uh, future uh, trilogy, as it as it were. I'm, so I'm I'm interested to see where this is going to go. Uh, this is not what you th what I thought it was going to be at all. I came in. Totally with a set of spoilers. Let me see if I can, with a set of um, predictions, uh, a la Tamara's never seen. That I was like, okay, we're going to discover the origin of Ray's parents, and that's going to be. And I, I totally thought that they were going to go like a um, The Empire Strikes Back kind of model, where this is going to be the really emotional story, which it is. Actually, it's a very emotional story, but that's going to be like. That, that would be kind of like the emotional end of it. We'd almost do a, an echoing to episode 5 where, like, Ray finds out who her heritage is. And, spoiler alert, it isn't... Uh, spoiler It's... They were nobodies. Her parents were basically nobodies. That's what we find out in this film. And I don't... Um, uh, ben actually reveals... Ben, ben reveals this to her. Uh, Kylo Ren, the character Ben Solo reveals this to her and says, you know, you know what the truth is. The truth is your parents were freaking nobodies. You were traded for, like, a bottle of beer. Like, you know, they're not gonna come for you. They don't care. You you don't belong in this story. And just kind of said, you know, you are just basically a nobody. Um, and I don't think he's lying about that. I, I don't... It would surprise me, given the direction this film went, that he is not lying. I, I don't I, I don't believe he's lying. I was half expecting him to say like sort your feelings, you know it to be true, and her to just like break down crying. Um so she found Luke Skywalker at the end of episode seven, and you know what he did when he grabbed the lightsaber? He just chucked it over his head and threw it away. <laughs> he's become old and curmudgeon now, and Luke is kinda like, I don't want to be involved in this, go away. You know, we're Jedi are stupid, we need to end. And he and Another thing I remember predicting was the origin of Snook and of the Overlord Snook and where he came from because I was totally banking that he was Palpatine or he was Darth Plagueis as referenced by Palpatine in Episode 3. Now, either one of those resolutions would render this totally useless, would render... would make the fanboys angry because... Go with me here. Let's say Snook was Palpatine, if or some manifestation of Palpatine. If that's true, that makes Anakin's sacrifice at the end of Episode Six useless. If he's Plagueis, Darth Plagueis, the character that Palpatine talked about in Episode Three, that means that the prequels are technically canon, which would piss off the fanboys. <laughs> There's no way around this. Um, but unfortunately, Luke actually does it for us because what he reveals is very briefly he discusses what happened. Basically, he gives a very, in a few sentences, overviews why he thinks the Jedi are absolutely foolish for their actions during the original, tr during the prequel trilogy. That you know, one of our, the entire Jedi Order was destroyed by one of our ranks. You know, we created a Sith Lord, and here we are trying to, you know, we're, we haven't really done exactly the right thing all the time. And he's kind of right. Um, this film takes a very cynical look. Whereas I heard, I heard this from somebody, and I really liked it. Um, the Force Awakens was nothing but a love letter to the original Star Wars, particularly it's almost beat for beat, Episode Four. 
Last Jedi is taking in its narrative a very cynical look at the mythos of Star Wars and saying, you know, not all this really works if you get down to it. <laughs> I, there's a line Luke says where he's like, what do you want me to do, Ray? Do you want me to come back swinging a sword and d defeat the entire First Order? It's like, yeah, that really doesn't sound like that would work. <laughs> um... And Ray's whole journey comes to nothing. It's like something she already kind of knew. It's like you know, you're waiting for your parents all those all those years and stuff. Did it ever occur to you that maybe they just really weren't anybody important? <laughs> and then just kind of threw it out there. It's, it's kind of an unfortunate emotional defeat for her. We see Poe. Okay, people were talking about how Poe was like amazing in the first film. I could not quantify what Poe did in Episode Seven. I cannot quantify what he did except fly, like, fly that one mission with him. That's all I can basically remember he did. I, I don't remember really anything significant he did to the plot. Poe is much more involved in this plot. There's, like, this, um... The, um he's the hothead character. He's like, I want to do this, and kick some ass, and, and take down a treadnought, and do this, and and he gets demoted for it, and then this other person takes over takes over their, their rebel ship that he doesn't like, and it looks like she's trying to betray them all and he stages a coup and takes over and it turns out he was still wrong and he's, he's got kind of an interesting adventure arc going on with him. Finn, I've already watched a review that had major problems with the Finn and Rose subplot. I disagree with the argument that it is unnecessary with the exception of one point in the film where Rose's sister died in the very opening battle against the Dreadnought in la in this movie. She's all sad and stuff. Rose intercepts Finn trying to leave the Rebel ship to go look for Rey. And they end up in a very convoluted and very quickly explained plot that they need to hack into the enemy ships and disable... They bas the bad guys can basically track light speed at this point. So... They need to figure out how to make to stop that, and they are like, "Oh, why don't we go find a code breaker to break their code systems so we can get away really quickly before the, they can redetect us?" Okay, so Finn and Ray are and Rose, Finn and Rose, go off to try to find this guy, and we learn a lot about Rose's backstory and where she comes from. And Rose is also a hyper fan girl for Finn as well. He's like, "Oh my God, you're a hero, and you did all this, and you did all this," and. In that story, Rose gets her own sense of triumph. She gets a sense to kind of fight back against something she doesn't like in her life. And gets the feeling that or that ordinary people can do something extraordinary. There, there's a huge push in this film about, in, in the narrative of, why can't someone who is nobody accomplish something? Why do you have to be a Jedi or a Sith to do something important? Why... Why does your story not matter because you're not someone important? Why does your contribution mean nothing? I, I, I think there's a very powerful set of messages in this film about that. And I think it's really... It's a message I don't see talked about in a lot of films and a lot of media. It's a, it's a really unique message. And I, I have a lot of respect for this film for this. Because it really does talk about, you know, why why can't someone who is nobody accomplish something great? And that is, in the mass narrative, really... I'll come back to it, but it really is encapsulated in Rey. Especially with her final... The final revelation that is just directly stated to the audience, where it's like, you know, your parents were freaking nobodies. Y you are a nobody. You just happen to have force powers. But yet, look what she can accomplish. And that, in the Finn-Rose arc, is talked about where Rose gets this sense of accomplishment from being with Finn, and through all the adventure they go through, and there's like a little romance subplot going there that I, I think is cute. Okay, I think it could work. I think Finn's a little blindsided for it, but I, I could totally see them as a couple. What I do not like is the forced thing at the... force thing at the end, where they, like, Poe and Ray meet for the first time, and they, like, smile at each other. It's like, thanks. Nice that the white characters get together. <laughs> I don't know, it just bothered me. Something just... I'm just really cynical about that. Like, really? We're going to force the Poe-Ray thing? Okay. Um, um, 
But yeah, back in Rose, Rowan, again, the one thing I don't like about Finn and Rose, the only thing I don't like, there's a moment towards the end of the film where it looks like, one of the ends of the film, it looks like Finn is sacrificing himself to save everybody by flying into a th- like a, this thunder cannon thing. And it is so emotionally well built up that Finn is willing to make the sacrifice, and then Rose crashes her speeder into him to stop her. To stop him from dying. It's like, Rose, why'd you do that? Because because caring about who we love for is how we're going to win this war. I'm not sure I'm buying that, Rose. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. It didn't work. I would have totally bought Finn dying at that moment. That it would have, it would have been a great cinematic death, and it would have complemented, un- unfortunately, other deaths that we s- that have occurred thus far in this new trilogy. Even to say, hey, you know, the new characters aren't invinci- aren't invincible either. Like, just let you know, like, okay, old characters can die, like Han Solo. Y- yeah, we just lost Finn. Like, this, I'm sorry, that would have been, that would have been a great freaking death. I, I, I was totally gangbusters for it. Like, oh my god, they're really doing this. They're actually going to kill off a new character. Holy shit. And to say that, you know, war, and the idea that war is costly. I, that's a huge other point in this film, is that war is a very costly thing. I think we really did not see a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> That the main characters can d- character. There's no such thing as immunity in this universe, and I, I think this is what this film is trying to say a lot about war and the costs of war. Because there's so many, like we see Leia very early on looking at the losses they suffered in the battle with the Dreadnought, and she's like, "Just holy freaking shit! Are we losing this many people over such a minimal gain?" Ah, mm. uh, my friend. Uh, is uh, telling me right now. We were talking back and forth. We were in opposite ends of the theater watching this, and and he's mentioning and about people having main character immunity. It's I, oh, towards the end, towards one of the ends of the film, um, Luke actually show, Luke, despite all the protestations. Um, oh, and I have to go back. There's so much to freaking talk about. And I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, but it's it's the the setup here is just so interesting how they handle this. Ray's, Ray uh, begrudgingly does get trained by Luke, and Luke discovers, holy shit, you have a lot of connection with the dark side, and, and that freaks me out. Da, 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 da. We find out we find out what happened with him and Ben, that he sensed darkness in him and thought that that had conquered his mind, and so he thought he failed because he was the great Luke Skywalker. And there's a great discussion about the expectation that you have when you have done something great. As well as the discussions of should you be able to do great things even though you're nobody? I, I, I think there's really an interesting undercurrent in this film about those those ideas. I, I, I love it so much. Luke is actually, and Luke is actually, the island he's visited is actually like apparently the ancient like origin point of the Jedi. Like this is actually where they start, like he has all the old ancient texts and stuff. And he ultimately decides when Ray leaves, like he's, I'm going to burn this shit and I'm, we're never going to see it again. Uh, and Yoda shows up. Actual freaking Yoda, and kind of chastises him, and like they say, like you don't learn a damn thing. You know, it's not about you. You you made mistakes, but you know what? That's one of the greatest things about being a teacher. Those are the greatest things we can learn from. And and despite Luke wanting to destroy the, destroy the text, Yoda does it for him and calls down a lightning bolt and sets the tree on fire and burns everything. So it's like it's really is the end. We're really gonna end. Yes. But it's not like the Force is gone. It's just, you know, maybe there's just not going to be a formal set of Jedi anymore. Luke then shows up to the Rebels. Like, he shows up, and he steps out in front of, like, the battery ram and stuff that's destroyed the thing, and there's all, there's all, there's all these adats and stuff, and Kylo Ren is there, and he goes, shoot him! And he orders, like, everyone to shoot him. He's so full of anger and rage at this point. Shoot him. This literally got an applause in the theater that he just, the smoke cleared and he's just standing there perfectly fine and he just wipes his shoulder off. It literally got an applause. And then uh, Ben comes down and, they have this, and he's like, yo, I'm not here to save you. And they have this fight. And Kylo Ren thinks he got him because he slashed him right through through his sword because Luke kind of does almost the same stance that 
um, Obi-Wan did when Vader killed him in Episode 4. Kylo Ren puts a sword right through him, and nothing happened. It just went right through him. And he's and he did it again and put it like through his chest and nothing and it just passes through an image. And then we see that Luke is still on the island. He's using the Force to project his holographic image all the way down to this planet, galaxies like galaxies away. The only problem I have with that is it completely undermines the moment where he stepped out of the smoke because that means he never was actually in any danger. Versus like doing like this like a Dragon Ball Z thing where he was just dodging all the bullets. Because then it's like the height of epicness. It's like, seriously? I'm a fucking Jedi? You thought that was going to work? Really? Because <laughs> I totally want him to do like a rock thing where he just gestures with his fingers. Just bring it. But no, it was merely a distraction, which Poe found out. I was like, he's trying, to, he's trying to distract them. We have to get away. He must have come through these tunnels somehow, which undercuts it. Because that door is the only entrance. Which is completely undercut by the fact that he's a hologram, which means he wouldn't have had to have walked through the tunnel. He just simply appeared. But that turns out to actually be true anyway, because the little glitter creatures went away, and it's so... It, it bugs me, okay? Well, they just bugged me from, from a narrative standpoint. It's a great moment, but then it's undercut by the fact that it was a lie. But we actually find out that Luke actually lost the rest of his... Either joined the for, lost the rest of his life and gave himself to the Force... Or just died as a result of doing that action because it took him just so much power to make that work that he joined the force. Which uh, Ray felt it was like he feels at peace that he had purpose with that action. Um, and I got to back up a little bit with Kylo Ren because I kind of passed over something with him. We meet Snook. We actually meet Snook in his physical form. And we never learn anything about him. He's not Palpatine. We never learn if he's Palpatine. We never learn if he's Plagueis. Like, but he just. He, he gets killed by Kylo Ren. In a very deceptive act, Kylo Ren makes it look like he's going to kill Rey, and no, he kills he kills Snook. And and we turn we find out that Kylo Ren just simply wants to start his own empire, and he wants Rey to join him, and and Rey won't do that, and they have to and they run away from each other. Um, have I covered all the points I wanted to cover? I'm just trying to think if I missed anything. I, um, but Leia almost dies. Leia gets, like, blown out of a ship, and it looks like her whole body is there, like, she's gonna have like, this epic death, and she uses the Force to bring herself back into the ship. <laughs> it's like, okay, she can do that now. Um, yeah, the major themes, a really interesting set of themes in this film. What is it that you can accomplish when you are not, when, if you don't have an expectation that you will accomplish something great? And what is the expectation you should feel of yourself if you have accomplished great things and how you are viewed because of those things? I did. It's a really interesting set of moral, moral ideas to bring up in this series. And I am really interested to see how Episode Nine is going to wrap up this trilogy. I, I'm really interested. Um, yeah, so that's my spoiler review. I definitely give this like an... I'll give it an A minus. I, I would give it an A, if only for the fact that there were some really awesome things that were totally defeated, narratively defeated, like seconds later. Spe specific, specifically, Luke. I'm like, and the whole thing Rose did to save Finn. I'm like, why did you do that, Finn? That was gonna be an awesome fucking death. You could have totally taken his place in the roster. I would have totally accepted you as the new character to take take that spot. Maybe you start doing stuff with Poe. You know. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Um, so that's it. Yeah, this is Firewizard23. Take care. Bye-bye for now, everybody.